Hey, 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 scrappy people. It's Tracy Reed here with number three in my 12 by 12 to Traveler's Notebook series with Create, Craft, Repeat. And today I'm working in my youngest Traveler's Notebook. And this sketch called for one, two, three, four, five photos on one Traveler's Notebook spread, which is quite a feat. But we're going to make it work. And so I picked out this yellow and this multicolored 6 by 6 paper and I decided that that teal paper isn't quite right. I wanted more of a green. So I pick out this seafoam green tiny dot paper and I'm going to trim it up um, both of the tiny dot and the large dot photo or papers. So this is going to be the main paper. So I'm going to trim it up to about three inches wide and then I need to, the traveler's notebook that I made is eight inches, so I'm going to trim it just over eight inches. And then I'm going to cut it in half, so I have one side on each page. And then I'm going to do the same with this yellow polka dot. You know that my littlest favorite color is yellow, so I can always, or I can never resist putting yellow in his books which is good because I have so many yellow papers and I don't often use yellow that much in my scrapbooking unless it's for him. So he gets to use up all of my yellow papers. Now I'm going to mat each of these little photos on a different color on the six by six paper. So I'm just gonna glue them down beforehand. You can see that um, it just leaves a tiny little color mat around each photo and I'll trim it up so that it's even on all sides. Um, I thought this would be more interesting than just one solid white paper like a film strip. Uh, the, the, the Traveler's Notebook spread is so whimsical because he's blowing bubbles and it's his kindergarten fun day at school. I thought we needed more color than just white. So I'm going to Trim all these down so that there's just a little bit of color around each photo. And then cut them in half. And I do decide at this point that I do want them to be cohesive like a film strip. So I pull out this um, paper from Pink Fresh Studio, which is actually the reverse side of that original blue that I had pulled out. And I'm going to use the doodly side, and I'm going to mat the whole series of photos like a film strip. So I'm just going to trim this up slightly wider than the photos themselves. And I love the little doodle, doodles behind the photos. It adds to the whimsical look of this layout. Make sure that they all fit, and it's going to be a tight fit vertically, but we're going to make it work. So I'm going to start gluing all of my papers down now that I've got them all trimmed up. And I'll move this in frame here in a second. I love using my scraps for my traveler's notebook. I only, I almost exclusively pull out of my scrap accordion folder when I am working in my traveler's notebook. And it's actually, my accordion folder is sorted by color. So it's actually really simple to get coordinating papers because it's all sorted by color. So I can just pull out all of one color and decide what I want to use. All right, now I'm going to start putting down these little photos. And I thought I had more room vertically than I actually do. So I'm going to glue down all of these photos and I'm gonna figure out that I'm gonna to have to glue them or move them and re-glue them again because that bottom photo is hanging off the edge a little bit. But that's no big deal. That's why I use the glue stick in my traveler's notebook so I can move stuff around easily. Of course, the glue stick really adheres once it's dry, but it takes a few minutes to dry, so it's helpful in my traveler's notebook that way. Okay, 
Now I've decided I need a matte on this photo, so I just am going to use white on this side from that Paintfresh Studio paper. I always map my photos in my traveler's notebook for whatever reason. And of course I always, always, always glue down my photo and then trim it. And then, of course, because I glue down my photo and then trim it, it's imprecise, so I have to pull it back up and reposition it and trim it again. But no big deal. I guess it's just how my process works. I guess the old adage, measure twice, cut once, doesn't really apply with my scrapbooking. Or really anything, I guess, in my life. <laughs> I just wing it all. So I have a whole big mess of word strip stickers that I'm going through right now. Just pulling out the ones by color that I think will coordinate. And I don't go too deep into this. Once I have a few out, I don't need many more. So I'm adhering somewhere from Chamel. And then Simple Stories from their summer line from last year that I didn't design. Not this year's summer line. I love that summer line though. It's so pretty. And now I'm going to start adding my title. And when I pulled out this alpha, it matched perfectly. But there was no S. So I'm going to have to think outside the box and not do bubbles. Be a little bit more creative with my title. I did have enough for bubble though. So I'm just temporarily placing it up here so I can start building my title and I'll reposition it in a second when I pull out the second alphabet. And I'm going to spell bubble play or no bubble love. <laughs> bubble love. And really, Finn is obsessed with bubbles. He really is. When we moved to Tennessee, the first thing I did was buy him a whole mess of bubbles. And he went through all of it in just about two days, which is fine. And he loved it. Keeps him occupied and busy. So when they had bubbles at his kindergarten um, fun day... It's basically all he did was play with the bubbles. There were so many stations, but the bubbles was where it was at for him, so this spread is celebrating his love of bubbles. I'm going to write my journaling, just something short and sweet on this label. And then I'm going to adhere it down there underneath those word strips. Okay, and this spread is almost done. I'm going to pull out my iris containers and start getting out some stickers that I think will match. I was looking for a yellow sun, but that first one was too big, so this one was perfect. But I am going to have to cut it in half for the seam. So I just folded it a little bit so that I would know where to cut it. Then I'm going to put half on the left-hand side. Well, I guess more than half on the left-hand side. And half on the right hand side. But these are a little bit too spaced out for me. So I'm going to reposition it because it's annoying. I don't like having that big space in the middle of the sun. The thing about Traveler's Notebooks though is when you put things over the seam like that, you have to make sure that they're not completely right nested in the seam. One, because it'll add bulk and make your Traveler's Notebook hard to fold but also too because the stickers and whatever you put in the middle there will start folding when you close your book and it'll mess up the spread. So you have to leave a little bit of a gutter there in the crease. And of course I'm repositioning these letters again because it's what I do. I reposition stickers all the time. And this spread is almost done, but I decide... Oh, I have to... I'm going to add a date first. <laughs> Add the date. 
And after I add the date, I decide that right there on the left-hand side by bubble, it just feels incomplete. So I'm going to look for something to put on the side there. And I pull out the orange iris case because there's that orange sticker down in the bottom right-hand corner. And I have these old, old vellum chevrons from... One of the first Gossamer Blue kits I ever received, and I just cut, it was a paper, and I just cut up the paper after I was done using it, and I cut all of the chevrons individually. So I'm going to put that one down, and then I'm going to grab a little, right, right there, right there, yep, a little die cut um, arrow that matches that chevron-ish arrow shape, and then... I'm going to add this playtime that I found in the orange iris case, which matched pretty well. And playtime bubble love sounded good for a title to me. So that's what we end up going with. Now, I don't have any more words to add to this, this spread. I've already said what I wanted to say, so I need to find something to add on to that white label over the orange chevron. So I'm searching through... For some stickers right now and I grab an arrow to put over there and then I grab a yellow heart for my yellow boy my yellow loving boy and I put it right there on that label I messed with it a little bit first to see if I wanted to put it somewhere else but nope I really liked it on that label and then I was still feeling like this was just incomplete. It didn't look right to me. So I decided to messy trace around the heart. And then just having the messy tracing around the heart was weird to me. Only having it around the heart. So I decided to messy outline the whole spread just going over the white parts around the edges so I draw one line first all the way around and then I decide to go around it again just in a few spots to make it a little bit scribblier to match around the outside of that heart and it adds a little bit of detail, makes it look hand done, which it was, and not like I'm trying to be perfect, which is good because there's no way I'd be able to make that perfect around the edge. All right, and I think it's done. So if you liked this, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and make sure you check out Kira's video over on Create Craft Repeat as well. I'll leave a link in the description. Thanks.